Alright, so I want to share an article. Um, you can check the article in the description section of this video. This, the evidence, the investigation is continuing, so information will be changing. But this is the article that I initially found. It's uh, Joan McKnight, former Jets running back, killed in New Orleans road range shooting. Former Jets running back Joan McKnight was killed Thursday in a Louisiana road rage shooting, authorities said. The 28-year-old was standing outside his car following an argument with another motorist when he was shot around 2.43 p.m. in Terrytown, a suburb of New Orleans. McKnight, okay, so now I was talking about his career. Um, a witness told the Times on Thursday that she saw the driver of Blue Infinity Sedan yelling at McKnight, who appeared to be apologizing as they stood in the middle of a busy intersection. The man who was yelling was later identified as 50-year-old, 54-year-old Ronald Gasser, then shot McKnight several times. She told the newspaper, Gasser stood over the victim and said, "I told you, don't f with me." And fired a final shot. The witness said. He said, he added that Gasser remained on the scene and relinquished his weapon to responding officers. Norman says Gasser is in custody and being questioned. No other gun was found outside the vehicles, but cops had not yet searched the cars and won't until a search warrant is issued. Video taken after the shooting shows paramedics attempting to save McKnight as he lay on the pavement behind his gray Audi SUV. I saw police. Okay, okay. Because then it's talking about his NFL career. Okay, so I read other articles and that were more developing. They said that they let the gasser guy go. They freed him from custody. Um, they're still investigating it, but they freed him from custody. They said that the, that they shot... <laughs> Go over there. They said that he was let go because they said that the gasser guy, the 54-year-old, remained in the car and shot from inside the car while this football player was approaching him and yelling at him. So they said that they, he let out three shots while in the car and then the, the rounds stayed inside the car. So then they said that he did not get out the car to shoot him. You know, um, that he stayed in the car to shoot him. And they're saying that According to the law, that's kind of stand your ground, that you're allowed to just defend yourself. You don't have to retreat. So he just stayed in his car and shot him from there. Um, who knows what led up to it. They said that somebody cut somebody off and then it just kept going from there. And it's a very sad situation. But at the same time, I wanted to share this video to show people the realities of street combat. Street survival, no rules, anything goes. Weapons, no weapons, whatever the case may be. Here you got a 54 year old going against a 28 year old. 28 year old is a football star, highly athletic, deadly person, unarmed, going against somebody who's double his age that's armed. And look what happened. You know, and this is all ego, this is all pride, this is this could have been easily prevented if either or of these parties just learned to just control their temper and just let it go, but they both didn't let it go. You know, I, I, I would assume that the 54 year old could have just drove away, but he chose not to. And even though the law states that he's allowed to defend himself in the way that he did, um, he could have took it upon himself to not, you know, take a person's life unnecessarily. 
you know, just like a police officer might have, he might be legally allowed to shoot and kill somebody, but then he might decide to tase the person and save his life instead. This person, I assume he could have been, could have, could have drove away from the situation, but he probably already knew his rights and the law, and he's like, you know, I'm just going to kill you because I'm just so upset right now. And I would... You know, I am, what I, based on what I've read from multiple articles, it would be my assumption that he shot the person from inside the vehicle, and then after he shot him, gets out the vehicle to tell him, I told you to stop, F with, to stop effing with me. That's what I think happened. You know, like they're arguing, and then um, the football player starts getting out the vehicle to, to fight him. And then he felt threatened, took his gun out, and shot and killed the threat while he was still in the car. After he kills him, or not kills him, after he shoots him, gets out the car and starts telling him, I told you to stop effing with me. That's what I think happened, and because this is a black and white, you know, thing where the person that killed the person is a white person, this could generate a lot of racial tension. But aside from the the racial aspect, there's the racial aspect, and there's also the aspect of fame. Like he killed somebody that was a famous person. If he would have killed a regular person that's not famous, it would might have been it, it would have been easier for him to be relieved and not prosecuted for homicide. And it would have been easier for the police to pretty much say that this is a justifiable situation of self-defense. But he killed somebody who is famous and now the investigation has to be you know more thoroughly conducted and this is the reality of what it is out there in the streets you know you gotta know the law you know if this person was he legally allowed to carry he probably was and according to the law if the law says you're allowed to stand your ground so if you're at your home and somebody's trying to, you know, he's on your property and you tell him to get off and then in that, in that state they say you're allowed to stand your ground, you're allowed to shoot somebody who doesn't listen to your orders and then you shoot and kill somebody, well the law said that you're able to do it so you didn't do anything against the law. So same thing in this situation. If he would have gotten out of the car as well and shot the person while he's outside of his car then he might have been prosecuted for homicide because they would have might have said well you didn't have to get out your car by getting out the car you became the aggressor and now you're gonna be, be prosecuted or if he the one if he's the one who got out the car and then the football player stayed in his car and then he kills the football player while the football player is inside his car then that's more clear evidence to say that this person was the aggressor and that this is a homicide because the the gunman the 54 year old gunman did not have to get out of his car he was not threatened but in this situation the 54 year old is, is in his car and then you have a 28 year old football player who is very angry at you coming towards you aggressively, you know, threatening you, um, then he will claim, well, I've, I felt threatened for my life, and that's why I took my gun out and shot and killed this person. You know, and this is the reality of street combat. You know, it's no joke. I mean, this is not tap outs. This is not three knockdowns in one round, this is not 12 rounds, this is not five rounds, this is not 
five minute rounds, this is not three minute rounds. This is real life violence, real life survival, real life self defense, real life situations of danger. And this is not weight classes, oh, you know, let's, let's step on a scale to see, to, to make sure we're the same weight before we fight. Let's make sure that we have the same skills and talents. Let's make sure that we touch gloves before we fight. Let's make sure that there's a referee standing by. All right, let me put on my mouth guard. Okay, let, let me, let me um, you know, take a break in between each round. Let me tap out. I mean, this is just, this is a clear example of the difference between street combat and sport combat. And martial artists really need to analyze this. And this is not something that's just glamorized for the public to to exploit and make money off of and to cheer about and have commercials in between and women holding up placards half naked and celebrities watching. I mean this is something that was unrecorded. It's not on ESPN. You know, it's not on TNT. This is this is not the Olympics. You know, this is something that's not recorded. It just happens in a flash right before your eyes and there's just a few witnesses that seen what happened. And now the officers are trying to determine what really went down. Collecting evidence. And this is what real life violence is. You know, and there's a lot of guns out there. Illegal guns and legal guns. And when you get up caught up in, you know, combat sports or these type of sports, aggressive sports like football and wrestling and boxing, and you might think that you're a strong person, but then a lot of times you're you know you fail to realize that you're living in a bubble, and in this real world there are guns, and there are police, and there are gang members. There's killers out there. There's you can't just be aggressive towards anybody and then think that nothing's gonna happen. You know, you can't. You know, a lot of there's been a lot of instances where police officers are killing others because these people are being aggressive. Now it's not a police officer. This is just a person driving a car, and then now there's an argument, and that argument can turn deadly very quickly, especially when there's guns involved. You know, so a lot of the martial arts training is designed to learn to. Control your temper, control your anger, to be in meditation, to be aware, to just let things go. You know, it's, it's just absolutely unnecessary to die over road rage. Somebody cuts you off. Somebody hits your car. I mean, these things can be repaired. You know, and it's just money. You know, and to die over stuff like this, you know, you, you, this person had a big future ahead of, you know, ahead of him. You know, he was in the NFL. You know, he's loved by many people. Why lose your life over something like this? It just... It's just unnecessary, and I think everybody should learn from this and just see there's fault on both sides. They were both egging on the conf confrontation. The football player and this 54-year-old are both aggressive and violent people that escalated to this situation. If just one of them learn to just back down and just let it go, then this wouldn't have happened. But they are both at fault. 
And that's something that we all could learn from. You know, but also, even from the 54-year-old standpoint, we could learn a self-defense situation where you are armed, you know your rights, you know the law, and there happens to be a violent person coming after you and you need to protect yourself. And this is a situation of that occurring and then now you got to see what happens, what he has to go through in the media, what the police are going to investigate and whether or not he really will be let go for the situation. But you also got to understand street justice. There's illegal justice, but then there's street justice. The police might have let him go, but his name and his face is everywhere all over the media, and he just killed a famous person. So all it takes is a friend or family member of this famous person of this famous person to just go out and make this person pay for this murder or homicide. And that's street justice and that's what happens in the gangs. You know, one gang member kills another gang member from a rival gang and then the rival gang comes back and kills the per the killer. And that's street justice. And the law is going to be hard for them to get in the way of that. Just like with the Tupac and Biggie. Tupac gets gunned down, next thing you know, Biggie gets gunned down. Now you got two lost lives. Over what? Over ego and pride. That's what happens in the streets. That's why you need, even if you are legally justified in killing somebody, it's a lot of times better not to kill the person because you got you to gotta watch out because they're going to come get you. Or your family member. And you might have to live your entire life in hiding. Because you have to worry about the police putting you in jail. Because the evidence doesn't support that this was a legal self-defense situation. And you got to worry about the family members and the friends of the person that you killed. That they're going to come and get you. So it just does not work in your favor to kill somebody when you don't need to kill them. You know, and the person being in the car and then the football players gets out of his car and their cars are side by side and you know his car's not trapped in, I don't see why he could have couldn't have just drove off and just not kill the person. But I think, you know, he's just so upset and he knows that he has the right to defend himself and he just did it. And then now there's a dead body on the ground and you just killed somebody that many people love. And yes, he, he might have had a temper problem, you know, um... But does that mean that he should die because of it? You know, or maybe he could have just pulled a gun and gave a warning. You know, or he, he could have maybe shot him in the leg one time. Instead of going in for the kill and shooting him three times. You know, but even even with the police, they shoot dead center for a reason. Because when the person's dead, he can't be a witness. So that's probably what's going on in this guy's mind. I need to kill him so then he can't be a witness. So then what happened will only be of my account of what happened. They're not going to know from what happened from his perspective because he's already dead. So this is clear-cut example of what happens what happens out there and it's just something that we all could learn from so give it some thought